you are able to expect change and then prepare to manage it when it comes, change will never catch you of God and destroy you. In this book, in chapter uh, 7, we talk about how to manage crisis. First of all, I believe that the reason God created man was for management. When I read the Bible, people normally think I'm reading a different Bible. Let me read what was on God's mind when he made you. And I think this will help you go into this economic crisis right now. In the book of Genesis, I'm going to show you a verse you never saw before. It says in Genesis chapter 2, it says, When the Lord God made the earth heavens, no shrub of the field had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant of the field had yet sprung up. Why? Because the Lord God had not allowed it to rain on the earth. Why? Because there was no man to manage the earth. <laughs> now, that's a verse you and I that's never saw. Marvelous. <laughs> this is powerful to me. First of all, God had a beautiful planet, but he didn't allow anything to grow, nothing to spring forth, nothing to emerge, nothing to prosper, because <laughs> there was no manager. Okay, a few things I learned from this. Number one, God will never allow growth where there is no management. So instead of praying for things from God, pray for the management ability. God, secondly, God will withhold things from you if you cannot manage them. It says he didn't allow it to rain yeah. because there was no man to manage the results. So the next verse says, and therefore God formed the man from dust to the ground and breathe into his nostrils the bread of life. In other words, God had a beautiful planet, no life was on it. Why? Because he first needed a manager. Normally we ask people, why did God create man? Our answer, to worship God. That's not what he says. He needed a manager. The number one motivation for God creating man is management. Whatever you mismanage, you will lose. In other words, God will never give you what you pray for. He will only give you what you can manage. That's if right. you mismanage your body, you lose it. If you mismanage your marriage, you lose it. If you mismanage your children, you lose them. If you mismanage your money, it goes away. When you think about the present crisis in the world today, some CEOs mismanaged uh, the process of mortgage uh, uh, qualification. And what happens? The whole world has been destroyed. When you mismanage anything, you lose it. And so in crisis, crisis is a result of mismanagement. And the way you correct a crisis is management. So I have a list in the book of what the Lord taught me about management, and I want to read this to you. Well, there's, a, there, there's a chapter called The Management Mandate. Please read it. Because if people don't learn to manage, they will keep losing what they receive. Number one. Yeah. Determine what you need. You know, there's a difference between needs and wants right now. Sometimes we desire things we want over and above things we need. And crisis sometimes comes to reduce you back to what you need. Some of us got five rooms in, a, in our house. We sleep in one and we can't pay for the house. God would allow a crisis to foreclose on that house because you are living in this house not sleeping with your family your children are in disarray because you work so hard to keep this house and you lose the home so God will cause you to have your home repossessed to bring you back to the basics relationships family love patience kindness goodness we sometimes we curse the Christ and God is saying no it's me a lot of people for the first time right now are finally recognizing their spouses. Why? They lost their job. We normally say that it's the devil. Do you know God actually destroyed the economy of Egypt in order to promote a young man who was in prison? Yeah. Let me say it again. God caused a national crisis in Egypt because there was a man in prison he wanted to make prime minister. 
Every crisis produces promotion. Don't be afraid of them. Sometimes the only way for God to move from where you are is to create a crisis that demands movement. You know, Joseph was in prison, locked away, and it was a crisis, a threat of economic collapse in Egypt. God said there'll be famine. I'm going to destroy all of the crops of Egypt for seven years. There'll be famine. That's a crisis. Well, how did God get Joseph out of prison? Joseph had the answer to the crisis. This crisis we go through now economically in America, in Canada, in England, in China, in Russia, in, in the United States, in South America, whatever it is, this is the greatest moment for promotion. This is when your gift comes alive. Joseph used to work in the courts of Pharaoh as a prince. That wasn't his gift. But Joseph gift came alive. The gift of seeing the future, explaining dreams, when a crisis came. And so, when you, when you talk about overcoming crisis, you have to look at the fact, in this book I talk about this, that people need to get back to what they need. You know, some of you, are, you had five cars, you only drive one. This is the time now to get back to the reality, look, I only need maybe one or two cars, I don't need five cars. Number three, don't live beyond your ability. There are people who are trying to compete with other people to make it in life, and they are hurting themselves and their families. Crisis comes to shake you back to what's important, what's valuable. Number four, withdraw from the unnecessary. There are things that you are involved in that you can't sustain anymore. So withdraw from those things. In other words, you may be involved in some clubs that demand fees that you can't pay anymore. Be willing to give that up. Why? Life is more important than a club. You've got to get back to loving your family, taking care of your wife, your children, your, your husband, uh, uh, to think your faith in God. God will always reduce you to Him. That's why He brings crisis. God allows crisis to bring you back to Him. Pharaoh actually thought he was a god until God created a crisis of famine, uh, he brought locusts, he brought blood in the water. When Moses started bringing those points of crisis, Pharaoh had to admit that there is a God greater than he was. Sometimes we become so prosperous, we forget God. And God begins to withdraw things to reduce us to him. Number five, delay major projects. Now what I mean by that is, you know, sometimes crisis comes to readjust our dreams. You, sometimes we, we are so passionate, we lose compassion. I've seen leaders who are so passionate, God told me to do this, and they forget to have compassion. And God would strip them of all the resources to bring them back to Him and to the real issue, which is the people. Passion should never become more important than compassion. It's very important that this crisis is used to bring us back to the basics. And even the government of your country, this great country America, is being brought back to the fundamentals. God is saying, look, you cannot do this without me. Your smartest economists are confused. A crisis upsets all the known systems. It destroys traditions. So everything you learn becomes useless. And in this book of Overcoming Crisis, I talk about leadership. You know, leadership emerges out of crisis, true leadership. And you never grow in good times. We never change in good times. Whatever you tolerate, you can never change. And that's why crisis comes to shake up the things you tolerate, to say, look, find a new way to do it. You think about Mahatma Gandhi. Yeah, hold on. How do we know this man four feet, two feet, four feet, two inches high? The guy defeated the great British Empire with a conviction, not with a bullet. How do we remember Peter? We remember Peter because Peter <laughs> failed. He denied Jesus and came back and became the pastor of the church. Why do we remember John, the Isle of Patmos, how he came back?
back and wrote the book of Revelations in 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. How do we remember Joshua? Because of Jericho. How do we remember Deborah? Because of the battles. How do we remember Esther, the little girl? Because she walked in at the expense of being... of a king. Crisis guarantees your space in history.